Hey, One Action News exclusive. Kids are dying at licensed daycares, and it could be because of how regulations are set up. After several area cases of daycare deaths, we spent months digging through the state records. 41 Action News investigator Jessica McMaster reveals what she uncovered. <laughs> His laugh was just like contagious. Had hardly any hair. He was a little cue ball. Um, looked like a little Charlie Brown. He said, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Are you telling him good morning? Oh, yeah, I still see his smile. When I woke up that morning and got Caleb ready for daycare, I would have never fathomed that that day would have ended up like it did. We run inside, and the hallway is just lined with hospital staff, paramedic, and nobody will look at me in the eye. It's a fear that runs through many parents' minds. Your kid's off at daycare, and they never return home. This wasn't a simple accident. While working as a manager at Walmart, Misty Durham had just returned from her lunch break. I was getting a phone call um, that my son was unresponsive and on his way to the hospital. Durham's son, Caleb, wasn't breathing. The only thing I do at that time is that I needed prayers and I needed them quick. Sadly, five month old Caleb was already gone. There's nothing like looking in the eyes of your child and he's not there. The report from the sheriff's office shows the owner of the daycare in Topeka, where Durham dropped off her son, left the house that day and left Caleb in someone else's care. That person laid Caleb down for a nap in a dog bed. He suffocated. After multiple tragedies, the 41 Action News investigators wanted to know how often these deaths occur and why. We pulled Kansas state records for the past 10 years. We found 40 cases, most of the deaths preventable. Children dying from things like strangulation, blunt force injuries, and drowning. Of those 40 deaths, nearly all of them, 38, happened at in-home daycares, even though more children are enrolled in daycare facilities. I just got off work. I One of those out. was Christina Williams' five-month-old son, Bryce. A detective told Williams Bryce choked at daycare in Wichita. And he said, well, are you Bryce's mother? And it was that was the sinking, and I said, Oh my God, what's going on? She met Bryce's father at the hospital. And he said, they won't let me see him. And a chaplain walked in with the doctor. You know, I can still close my eyes and I can see him laying on the table. State records say Bryce died from SIDS, but Williams says that's not true. She didn't check on him for almost two hours. She put him on a doubled over blue Pokemon sleeping bag on his face. Neither daycare providers in William in Durham's cases were ever criminally charged. We reached out to the licensing department to find out why children are dying more frequently at in-home daycares than daycare centers. But the agency declined our interview request. Instead, a spokesperson sent us this email stating when it comes to child care deaths, the rate of occurrence is too low to speculate. One is too many. One is too many. Paula Neff is with the Family Conservancy, which helps to provide resources to families looking for child care. She says the data likely boils down to one thing. What I would tell you is that supervision is critical. And when you're in a family child care situation, you have one adult typically, unless they have an assistant. So you have one adult with up to maybe 10 children of mixed age groups. You know, how are we making sure that all children are in sight and sound at all times? We read through state regulations for in-home daycares and daycare centers. While it's not surprising that some regulations are different, we found in-home daycares don't have to follow what seems like some basic safety requirements. In a home, if a child is over the age of two and a half, they can play unsupervised. The in-home provider doesn't even have to be in the same room. Children can also play outside in areas that are not fenced in. A toddler hit in a truck in Olathe has died. Last Last year, a child was killed at an in-home daycare when a truck hit her as she played in the driveway. More than 40,000 kids in Kansas attend in-home daycares. Parents oftentimes prefer a home-like setting, and most of the time, there are no issues. Regardless of the type of daycare you choose, Neth suggests parents do drop-in visits. If you're walking through and you see that the adults aren't interacting with the children, but children are kind of left or children are wandering, 
that would be a red flag for me, that the teachers aren't really that engaged with the children. And above all else, trust your instincts. I mean, I have doubt every every day, and it's hard not to, because you can look back, and I saw signs. <laughs> And you want to, obviously, I can still hear his laughter. He had the best laugh. He was such a happy baby. What are you doing? We asked the licensing department why in-home daycares are not required to follow what seems like some basic safety requirements. A spokesperson wouldn't go into specifics, but says the most important aspect of safety is attentive supervision. I'm investigator Jessica McMaster, 41 Action News.